Whale sharks, the largest fish in the sea. Of the 29,000 species of fish in the world's rivers, lakes and oceans, only about 1,000 are cartilaginous fish. The rest are bony fishes. Cartilaginous fish, which include all of the sharks and rays, have a skeleton made of tough cartilage. Fish with cartilage tend to be more flexible and lighter than bony fish. We know from fossil records that sharks first appeared 370 million years ago. Rays appeared 160 million years ago. This means sharks were in the oceans before the dinosaurs arrived on Earth and are still here well after the dinosaurs became extinct. There are more than 440 species of shark in the world and the number is likely to rise as new species continue to be discovered in the deep ocean. The whale shark, however, is a relatively new species. It is thought to have first evolved 60 million years ago, the same time as the dinosaurs died out. They were first scientifically recorded in 1828 in South Africa. They were found in the tropical waters of the world, broadly between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, though they must go further south at times to go around the African and South African continents. They can grow up to 12.6 metres and weigh up to 15 tonnes. We know this from measuring dead specimens. They have incredibly thick skin, which is up to 10 centimetres in places, and overlaid with dermal denticles or skin teeth. They are thought to live up to in 120 years. They can travel enormous distances and descend to great depths. A shark tagged in the Gulf of California was tracked for 37 months and 13,000 kilometres to Tonga. However, it seems that sometimes they move only relatively short distances and can hang around in areas for years, such as the Maldives. Early genetic studies showed that those whale sharks found in the Maldives vary very little from those found off Belize, suggesting there to be one hugely distributed global population that all have the potential to mate with another shark anywhere in the world. However, more recent genetic analysis has suggested that the species is showing early signs of what is known as ocean basin level genetic separation. So separate groups are beginning to evolve in the Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean and Pacific Ocean. So, how do you spot a whale shark? You need to look for a constant dark shadow under the water. It will be darker than the shadow cast by a coral rock block and will not change its contrast as the boat moves in relation to it. Coral blocks will usually appear lighter as you approach them. You may also see fins above the surface, usually the main dorsal fin and the tip of the tail fin. The best place to look is along the edge of the reef, where the light blue shallow water meets the dark blue of the deep water. For researchers and conservationists, there is a simple but important means of identifying individual sharks. Individual whale sharks can be identified using photos of their unique spot patterns. Image processing software can be used to compare the spot patterns of many different sharks. This data can be used to estimate population size and growth, individual shark growth rates and movements, track injury rates and recovery speeds. The great thing is that anyone with an underwater camera can contribute information to local research programs or to online databases. So, 
What has the Maldives whale shark research program discovered? The program has collected data from over 2,100 encounters and 220 whale sharks up to February 2015. Whale sharks are also slow moving and have a tendency to hang around close to the surface, which puts them in harm's way from humans. But they are also vulnerable because they are slow to reach maturity and reproduction rates are low. The whale shark is now listed on the IUCN red list as vulnerable, meaning it projects a total population decline of between 20 and 50 percent over 10 years. Most countries now recognise the value of living specimens, with the Maldives citing their value in ecotourism as one of their main points when making them a protected species here in 1995. In 2013, in the Maldives, there were 78,000 tourists who did whale shark excursions in South Ariatol alone, putting a value of £9.4 million to the presence of these animals. This offers an alternative to fishermen. You can't say to someone who hunts to feed their family and put their kids through school not to do something and expect them to follow that. To be successful in conservation, an alternative preferably a financially better one, must be offered to those losing livelihoods by stopping hunting. Tourism is good as the people running boats know the animal, where it is found and how to approach it without scaring it. They put some tourists in the water with it, and this can be done again and again. Even better is to get the tourists involved in the research through citizen science, helping us learn more about these mysterious and wonderful creatures, as well as sowing the seeds of a new generation of conservationists.